Uh, first off, John, uh, any any late thoughts about the uh, about the Colorado game and and did you hear from the league at all? <laughs> about my post game comments or just an apology for uh, yeah the answer Anything. Is, yeah no I haven't heard from the league at all that's good news and bad news um, I hope it gets addressed you know it needs to but um, at this point I, I don't think anything's going to be done about it so um, uh, and then just you know we obviously watched the game back a lot and have done uh, video review with the players and some IDP stuff. Uh, and, you know, it was a, what I told you, Tom, it was a good performance by our team. Excellent challenge against an MLS, you know, proper first team. Uh, and, you know, if it weren't for some dubious, you know, extra time being added, which we, I can't figure out, um, uh, then it would have been a three pointer for us, which, you know, would have been great. But, you know, we, we got to move on and we got Chicago in front. So that's where we've turned our attention to. But did you see anything, any, anything that you didn't notice originally about just how, how you played or things you could have done better or things that were exceptional? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we dropped our defensive line a little bit too much in that second half. We gave the Rapids too much time and space. And that's not the way we, we want to do things based on our principles. Um, so I, again, you always, and against a really good opponent, you know, of quality, uh, the likes that were represented by the Rapids on the night, um, they tested us and, you know, we answered some tests, um, just by making plays, not necessarily sticking to our principles. So I think that's an opportunity for us to really improve those. Um, and it's nice to have that, you know, when that happens, you know, you're, you're being tested against, uh, players that are, are playing at the highest level. Um, is this going to be, uh, presumably this is the toughest game of the lot also because you're playing a rested Chicago team while you come off of uh, minimal rest? Yeah, minimal rest and coming down from altitude, you know, that has a big factor. Um, that's why we, you know, try to go into late into Denver and leave Denver as soon as possible. Um, so we got here yesterday uh, and into Chicago and just trying to get recovered and regenerated. Um, but yeah, it's a tough, anytime you have three games in a week and in particular, you know, Houston was the top team in the league. Then all of a sudden we're playing an MLS team at altitude at their home. You know, now we have our third game in Chicago to give them credit. I mean, I'm really impressed watching a lot of video of how they play and their style. Um, so it's going to be a tough task for us. Yeah, just kind of looking at Chicago's games, they, they've been shut out, I think, five times. But then they had that game where they scored six goals. So is it kind of one or the other with them? No, no it's, it's more about the way they play. Um, uh, they've been very consistent. Again, you know, for a developmental league, uh, I give them a ton of credit for trying to stick to their principles um, and stick to, you know, more of a, a consistent roster haven't seen as many first team players, uh, you know, who represented both a few, but that's normal. Uh, but they've been more consistent with their two roster. Um, I say that and lo and behold, they'll put out their first team tomorrow against us. So, you know, what the hell do I know? But um, in, in terms of video, I, I do have a lot of respect for the way they're doing stuff. Jim, did you want to go? Uh, I just have uh, one question to, for Coach. Uh, uh, the pro what's the next pro website is calling this rivalry week. Uh, I guess this is going to be your first taste of uh, Chicago St. Louis rivalry, and you know, no telling what's going to happen when um, the MLS team actually starts. But I think that was one of the big things by getting St. Louis into the league to have that rivalry which with Chicago and Nashville and Kansas, Kansas City. I know when I was playing, it was a big rivalry because we would always go up to Chicago first uh, for cup games. So just wondering how the, how, how the rivalry aspect is, is challenging you. Well, to be fair, we really haven't thought about it. We haven't had much time to think about it. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
But to your point, I think it is really important. Um, and when you talk about our region and, you know, the kind of Midwestern mentality of, of how you compete and, you know, how you, you just make sure that, you know, you're doing everything in your power to be better than your opponent. Um, that does add something uh, to it. And again, we don't know exactly who we'll see on the field tomorrow, um, but we're playing in, in the, the big stadium. Uh, the field looks wonderful. So it should be a nice environment for uh, our first competitive game against them. All right. Thank you, coach. Thank you, Jim. So John, did, did you guys go on the field at all yesterday or will you go on the field today or? Unfortunately, um, to Jim's probably point, um, our competitors are not gonna give us that, that advantage of seeing the field. So they will not allow us on the grass uh, before we play. So are you gonna, are you, do you at least have a park somewhere? Are you gonna get out and run around or are you just kind of keep everybody off their feet after playing on Wednesday? Yeah, no, part of it is that we got here yesterday. We had a group that just did a strict regen in the pool. Um, and some some movement um, just to flush their system. And then we had a group that we took out and, and trained in a local field here. Um, and both those sessions were excellent. So guys, uh, again, it's tough, but in the ways that we're trying to measure it, guys seem to be uh, recovering. And uh, today we will go out and uh, again, be on, on a field and uh, just do our best to, to get our game plan in order for tomorrow. Have you been kind of staggering? I mean, like Diaz didn't play the other night, so potentially he comes back in tomorrow and things like that. Yep, that's exactly what we've done. Hmm. Anybody uh, else have see. any questions? Uh, hang on, I have something else. Hang on a second. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John, actually, have you had a chance? Did they did did Josh allow you to step on the grass? at the stadium or you just seen it? Uh, Josh will not let us on the grass at the stadium. So um, I don't know why uh, Dan from uh, you know our other department uh, was on, I'm just kidding. Um, now Josh is pretty protective of the stadium and so are you know, Bradley and I, we went there uh, last week and it looks fantastic and we're so excited to, to when we do actually get to get out there. But we're trying to let Josh do his job and, and he's certainly doing a great job. And he's got some staff members now, so they're kind of rolling. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Did you have any input? Did they talk to you guys all and say, or did Josh just say, no, this is this Bermuda grass is the way to go? No, that, that, um, that, that really important conversation. Um, Josh came out to training one day. Um, uh, early in his tenure and it just kind of, we had a, a conversation and really Bradley was a catalyst for exactly what he wanted um, in a lot of specifics about it. So I thought it was super healthy and, and I don't know that it was planned, but it turned out to be a, a very good discussion. Okay. There Coach, this is uh, Guy Vincing from the St. Louis Fan Report. And first of all, I want to say thank you for holding this at, at one o'clock in the afternoon, which is 8 a.m. for me. Normally you're holding it at 4 a.m. That's why I can't, I haven't been on, so I do apologize. Do you have any um, injuries or guys that you're concerned about going into tomorrow's game? Yeah, I mean, we always have, you know, you play a, a game like we did on Wednesday night and you're going to have some, some knocks, uh, some bruises. But thankfully, um, we didn't have any injuries coming out of that game. And that gives us the ability to, to move forward uh, with, with picking the whatever roster, you know, we, we select for tomorrow. So that's good news. And by the way, I, I respect that you're, you're in Hawaii. Is that true? Yes, sir. Wow, that's impressive. All right. Well, I'll, I'll make sure John knows that um, from now on, he should try to schedule these in a time where you can uh, be awake. Yeah, 4 a.m. is a little tough, so I apologize. No problem. I like his background. <laughs> yeah, everybody wants to come here, and I want to be where you guys are, so someday. <laughs> Do you guys have any more questions for uh, Coach before we hang this one no, up? No, I just, just wish him the best of luck again. Can't yeah, wait to um, get back at St. Louis. Well, Jim kind of stole my question, but I want to go off of that a little bit. Um, you know, Chicago, Nashville, Denver are natural are, are natural rivalries because of 
hockey and baseball are are you do you want to embrace those rivalries too do you want to embrace those being in the city of st louis and then being natural rivalries from the other sports absolutely i mean it's just i mean why wouldn't we you know it's it's you build on it um you know uh, in my former life, I was a Tampa Bay Lightning fan, which I'm not going to say that, you know, I'm still that one, but I'm a Blues fan. So, um, and I love to see it. I'm a Cards fan. And it's, it's, it's in St. Louis, as you guys know, it's contagious. Um, and that's really cool to be a part of now. Um, and we are definitely trying to build on that because any team sport is about how you come together and the energy that you use and how you use it to motivate yourself and to feed off it. So, you know, we like when uh, we get a little bit of that, that buzz from our opponents and, and want to build a rivalry. You know, it's, um, I'll tell you, Colorado playing their first team the other night, they planted a nice little seed for us going forward. So um, we're ready. We're ready to go. Uh, thank you. Yeah, was there a feeling after that game, you're like, hey, we played against an MLS first team. You, 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 during the Open Cup run, it was like, you wanted to play an MLS team. That was a hope of by extending. Was that just like, wow, we can, this team can, can play with an MLS first team squad? Absolutely. I mean, look, we, you have to be confident in, in everything you're doing. So, you know, we know where we are right now. We're playing in next pro. That's the, the level, that's the league we're in. But we've already seen a lot of first team guys uh, in different matches. This was unique because um, you know, Colorado makes a decision. It's a long break. I don't, I actually don't, you know, have any ill will towards Colorado playing their first team. It actually was nice. Um, cause it was a great test for us, but, um, you know, we on, we only can compete in this league, you know? Um, and when you face a first team that, that wasn't necessarily the, the plan, uh, you know, playing for points and things like that. So, um, it all counts for us, you know, uh, and that's where, uh, at this point we just have to every week face whoever, uh, you know, the, the first team throws down to the, to the next pro and, and we just deal with it, but we are very confident, uh, Tom, about our ability and we're bullish on feeling that we're as good as anybody. Is, is it, Tom, do you mind if I ask a question? No, go ahead. Is there anybody whose development has surprised you, especially after a game facing Division One or level, you know, cup level teams? Yeah, I mean, so many of our guys are absolutely, you know, developing right as we go through this season. We have so many guys that came from the college level in particular. You know, this is their first pro season. And when you go from playing college soccer, where the, the season is two and a half, three months sometimes, um, and yet now we're into, you know, month seven, sorry, month six of actually working together without a break. Um, all of those adjustments to the professional level are tough. So uh, we got some young guys, you know, we, we started teenagers the other night. Uh, we'll continue to do that. So. Um, it's been, as a whole, really exciting for us to watch some of these guys grow and develop, and that's the whole point of doing this in the first place. With, with that, do you do you feel confident that a lot of the guys that you're coaching now are going to be on the inaugural team in 23? Um, look, that's a that's you know a different discussion, but my job is to give them that opportunity, you know, to give them an environment where they can learn and grow. And, uh, you know, Lutz and, and Bradley, uh, have, we all work so close together that I think you're, you're going to see some guys that, that are able to make that jump. And that's, that's what we want. You know, we want this pathway to be very clear, whether it's to our, you know, Aaron Hurd, who's 15, or it's to, uh, you know, uh, you know, a Kyle Hebert coming out of college and, and playing pro for the first time. I mean, we want this pathway to be that they, at a minimum, you know, have that dream of playing uh, in Centene for the first team in 2023. And, you know, we got a long way to go, but we're very uh, we're optimistic about that growth right now. Uh, one, one last question I have to ask, and have you watched any of the old videos or tapes of when the steamers played in St. Louis in the, in the late eighties, early eighties uh, and how that crowd was, are, are you hoping to bring some of that energy into your stadiums? 
Yeah, well, I was actually, I, I lived that. So I was a little, <laughs> I was uh, growing up, the reason I became such a soccer, you know, crazy person is that, um, and I grew up in Tampa Bay, Florida, and the Tampa Bay Rowdies, you know, were, were one of the best teams during that time in the NASL. So it was a wonderful time for, you know, a young American kid to, to see some of the best players in the world and to see a league that was as good as any uh, at that time. So um, absolutely. I can't say that I watched it on film, um, but I lived it live, which was even better. Yeah, I agree. I was a big fan of that. So thank you. No problem. All right. Any, any more questions before we let coach go? Good luck. All, all good. Thank you, John. Thanks Guys, for your time. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it.